We're going to plant a bald and burlap uh, Japanese maple, but this works the same for any bald and burlap tree. We've dug the hole about twice as wide as the root ball, and uh, we're attempting to dig it exactly the same depth as the root ball, but because that's hard to judge, we put a little, tri a little cone of loose potting soil or loose uh, fill material in the bottom of this hole so that it will, when we put the plant on it, we can twist it and make it go down to just the right elevation. So Scott is going to put the um, Japanese maple into the planting hole now. Uh, with the, all of the uh, burlap intact, and you'll notice there are a lot of roots coming out the bottom of the burlap, and that's why we don't remove burlap. Even when you have the uh, burlap um, showing no roots, it, there can be root hairs embedded in the burlap, and if you remove the burlap, it will uh, actually harm the, the plant. Um, the, um, he's orienting the, the plant so that the tip is pointing out over the rock the way we want it. He's got it to the right height. And now he's going to take apart the, the root ball. He already cut the string so you didn't have to wait through that part of the process. And now he's going to uh, inspect the root collar to see where the roots come out from the trunk and he's going to remove back some of that soil to show you that's really where the roots begin to attach to the trunk so it is um, uh, at the right depth to have that piece of the trunk where it flares out right at the soil level. You want to be sure not to bury the trunks in deep bark because that will promote wetness and wet right against the trunk will actually rot the bark. Uh, roots are meant to be underground, bark is meant to be above ground, so just keep that in mind. Now he's putting the uh, burlap down um, uh, into where it will just get buried. And now the key is to water and we do this before we backfill the plant. If you don't fill that hole with water before you backfill. The plant itself could be dry inside the root ball. That's impossible to know. It, um, uh, many times it looks wet on the top, but it may be dry inside. And by just soaking the, the ground that it's sitting in and the root ball itself, it will make sure that everything gets completely wet and, it, and that you're not planting into dry soil that will suck the water away from the roots. So we do a really thorough watering at this stage uh, of planting, and then, then we backfill, and then we'll actually water again. Okay, and now we've let the water drain away and we're backfilling. And we check to make sure the tree's still in a nice straight position so that it's oriented the way we want and at the right angle. And now we just backfill. And Scott will um, make sure there's no air pockets and just sort of uh, tamp in a bit around the sides. Um, once he's got the material in and then we will finally we will um, water one more time um, rake it out and there's really in most places not to unless you're on a steep slope where there'd be runoff problems there's no need to make a big ring around the tree or it's also one of the main problems of using drip irrigation in order to plant a tree because you're giving a wet spot the size of a dinner plate to something that needs a wet spot um, more like the size of four or five kitchen tables uh, instead of one dinner plate. So that's, the, um, that's my argument against drip irrigation when it comes to trees is that you simply don't provide enough except for a very, inf uh, very immature plant, an infant plant will get plenty. but. Um, by drip, but once it's trying to mature and actually grow, it, it takes so many 
emitters to possibly uh, feed one tree that it's um, it's kind of questionable as a as a horticultural practice for trees. But now that um, tree is perfectly planted, it just needs to get one more watering, and that will do it.